welcome to Stacy's Homestead and today we're going to be canning milk. Now I like to can milk for several reasons but um, mainly it's cost effective and that uh, I'm always happy to have shelf stable milk in my ca my cabinets for whenever it's needed. So um, we're going to get started here. I'm going to be using my uh, Miro canner which requires three quarts of water so I always make sure I fill the water up first just in case you don't want to forget and then ruin your canner so always put that water in first I'm going to be using Tatler lids and I'm reusing lids and I know um, that's discouraged but my kitchen my rolls and I reuse lids only if they've been water bathed and only on a few products um, milk being one of them but I won't do it on uh, like beans and soups and stuff. I do it on things that I'm going to be re using pretty quickly. And milk is something I reuse quickly. And um, a couple new lids. So I got my hot boiling water in my lids right here. You can see it's steeping in the lids. And I got my milk in... Remember, the temperature of your product, your canner needs to be the same temperature. So, so if you have cold milk, it has to be cold canner. If you have warm milk, do a warm canner. If you have hot milk, hot canner. That way, it, it, um, you don't have thermal shock on your jars, but it brings everything up to temperature at the exact same time. So remember, that's the rule. And because our milk is kind of cold, we're doing a cold canner. And we're just going to fill our jars up. Each jar up to, um, I like to do about a little over an inch head space. Just a little over an inch. And I'll bring you in for a close up while we do this. Okay, so we're going to fill each jar up just a little bit over the inch head space. And my canner holds 18 with two racks, so I double stack with these racks, it holds 18. So we'll be doing that. Now, canning milk is one of those things that either people approve or don't approve because it's not actually in the books. Now the reason why it's not in the books is because it just hasn't been officially tested. It's not, uh, splash milk all over myself, it's not dangerous because people have been canning milk for hundreds of years and it's just one of those things that just hasn't been tested. So again, do your own research and the, how it goes is my kitchen, my rolls, right? There's only a few things I'll go do the rebel canning and basically I stick to the books and I only veer in things I know that have been done for a long, 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 long time. So milk being one of them. Okay, we'll get the new one. I had to reuse up that other one. I think I go, I think 18, we'll see. I think 18 is about a gallon and a half. So just, a, I put a little too much in this one there. And you don't want to wipe your rims with vinegar on this because it'll curdle your milk. Just do hot, warm water. And that's another reason why. So when I do milk products, I use, these are the jars I use. I don't use these jars for anything else. I only use these for my canned milk. Because I know, um, I mean, you want to wash your jars really, really well, right? But then there's occasionally, who knows, something might get left behind 
that may cause your milk to curdle. So I don't want to risk that, so I just dedicate these jars only to milk. That way I have, I'm guaranteed not to have curdled milk. Now I don't disinfect the jars because if you're water bath canning or canning for over 10 minutes, then you don't need to disinfect. So I just make sure they're really clean with soap and water. And um, that's how I do that, y'all. And then, um, so there's two types of uh, lengths of time you can do this. So one of them is you bring it up to, you vent your steam for your 10 minutes, and then you bring it up to pressure, and then when you hear it go shh, then you shut it off right away. That will give you milk that tastes more like regular milk. It's just, it, it's, as long as you put it in the fridge, um, open it up, put it in the fridge, and it's going to taste just like your milk. Not much different. And then the other way is that I like to do, because I want more of a canned milk consistency, is you put it in, you vent for 10 minutes, and then when you bring it up to pressure, you can for 10 minutes. Now canning that for that 10 minutes makes it a little bit um, more condensed, like condensed canned milk, and a little bit more sweeter. I know I've tried it for 15 minutes and there is no difference in taste or flavor. So we're going to need a little more milk. So I think it's more like almost um, a little less than two gallons. So I'm going to finish this up and I'll come right back to y'all. There's a couple I want to add a little bit more to. go yeah so on this round I'm gonna do the 10 minute um, pressure canning for the more condensed milk that I was talking about so I like to get that more caramelized condensed milk and then also what you can do is you can do a creamers um, you can add vanilla to a couple you know what let's add vanilla to a couple of these let's get some vanilla and add some of that all right, so we're going to add some vanilla to a couple of these because I want to make a creamer. And so we're going to get like a spoon. We're going to do three of them as a creamer for coffee. And I'll make sure they're my reuse lids. So we got, let's do a teaspoon or a serving spoon, whatever spoon this is. Just a regular old spoon of vanilla in each. I don't want to add sugar because I don't want to cook the sugars, you know. Maybe let's just do, because it's going to have its own sugars. It'll get a little sweet. And then you add it to coffee, you just put sugar in your coffee. You know, yeah, you know what, let's try adding sugar. Let's try adding a little bit of sugar and see what happens. Let's try adding just a little bit of sugar in these ones. So I'm going to put like just a little bit of sugar in that just to give it some sweetness for some coffee. Let's see how that turns out. A little caramelized creamer there for us. Vanilla creamer. All right. So I've only done, I never added the sugar, so, but I think, why not? Let's just see. Um, I've only done just the vanilla, um, but a little bit of sugar shouldn't be hurt. Shouldn't get, we'll see, we'll just see. It might turn out to be good. All right, so um, now we're just gonna put our lids on. Okay, so I can't forget to wipe the rim, so I'm just going to dip it in plain warm water and just wipe it down real fast. 
all the way around each one. Even little dust particles or stuff can get in the way. So I like to do different pieces just to make sure it's always clean. It's just one of those things they do. Oh, this one has something on it. I got that off. Do another one. You can mix with flavors on the, your creamers too. You can put a little bit of um, uh, pumpkin spice in there. Anything you you want that you like, you can make your own. Just. Uh, your imagination, you know, trial and failure, that's all. Okay, so let's get our lids here. I'm going to put the used lids on these ones. So put the used lids on them. These are fingertip tight. Make sure they're good. No chips or anything, no dents, and the rubber is good. And then I want to mark these two before I put them in. That way I'd know which one's what, because these are dark glass jars. They're purple. I got these a long time ago. I got a bunch of them. I have a lot more. But, um... I love them. I love the dark color. All right, we're going to put a creamer. If the pen will work, I didn't dry it enough. Let's dry it more. Good, dry it up. Cream. I'll just put a C on it for now. Just put a letter C on it for now. There. There we go. There. Put those aside. We'll go ahead and put those in the container. All right. Let's put these on in the canner. We're gonna do all the used ones first. I got something fell in there. Do all the used ones. First. Put those down. jars um, from Walmart I think it was Walmart about five years ago it was online so not back then you had to pay for shipping and stuff but or six years ago mm. yeah so I don't know if you can find them anymore but they're really cool and then look at they came with these purple lids I have a few that I haven't used because I took them off to reuse some lids. So I'm going to use some of these new purple lids here. I don't know what I dropped in this milk. Okay. Oh, they're, um, what's interesting is they're Bernard lids, but ball jars. So you know they're from the same company. I should have got the brown. I was going to get brown jars, but I was like, oh, those are just too expensive right now. And that was uh, a, a couple of years ago, and I should have got them because they're probably more expensive now if you can find them. But I got a bunch of blue ones, and the blue jars, I saved those jars for fermentation or um, 
or mayonnaise. So I use them for yogurt, buttermilk, and mayonnaise. Just my refrigerator stuff. Okay, fingertip tight on these. So we're gonna put all those go on the bottom rack. Now these last ones are going to be Tatler lids. The water is cooled down enough for me to handle. So I'm gonna put them on, center it. About three turns, just just till right almost fingertip tight on these. These are all new lids. I mean, new lids and bands. One, two, I did get three spins. One, two, three, there we go. Just a little bit, oh, right until it, that resistance. So these are really like just shy of fingertip tight. You're almost fingertip typing, tightening it, but it's not quite there. Oh, we got one used one we forgot. Oh, you know, I don't, it probably stuck. I probably don't need it. Let's see. Yeah, we'll just use that. Whoa. You know, um, mine, for some reason, I think the ones in the center of my canner, the ones I put in the very center, get hot and the lids um, kind of sometimes I get siphoning in that area. So what I'm going to do, what I, I started doing, is putting um, the the ones that are a little bit tighter down in that area, or a metal lid in that area, and I it's better. So I'm going to put this metal one in the center. Yeah, because I have a gas burner and I think it gets more heat in maybe more in the middle. So I've learned to just try to make maybe put ones with metal lids in the center or leave the center open or um, this fingertip tight. Oh, I, I have one too many, I think. Oh, no, I don't, huh? No, I don't. Or if I um, put a tattler in the middle, I just make sure it's on a little bit tighter because it, it, the, it ends up rattling off or loosening up too much. All right. There we go. Okay, so we got all of our jars in our canner and we're going to make sure our spinny thing is clean that like I showed you do in one of my videos if you have one of these weights I have a video that shows you how to make sure it's clean and good and then on the gaskets on the mirror they're silicone meaning you don't have to oil no but people <laughs> I see some people say suggesting you oil your gaskets if they're silicone you don't do that it's the old ones that were made of rubber that stretched that you do that but these are 
they've been making silicone ones for quite a while. Just, I gotta make sure it's all clean. Make sure the vent, everything's clear. And then you put it on. So, put it on. Turn your heat on and then wait for it to come up to steam in a steady stream of steam for 10 minutes. Put your weight on and then as soon as it starts going if you want regular tasting milk you turn it off. Now if you want more of a canned milk as soon as it starts go coming to pressure and going you do it for 10 to 15 minutes. I tr I've done it for 15. There is no difference between 10 and 15. So I do it for 10. Um, so yeah, you just, uh, I'll be doing mine for 10 minutes in, on pressure to get more of a caramelized flavor. More of that canned milk condensedness. Um, but we'll just come back to it when I get it uh, up to pressure. Okie dokie. Alright, so it's almost done venting for the steady stream of steam for 10 minutes. Now I have my weight all cleaned up and ready to go. Now in the video I have that shows you how to maintain these types of weights. Um, if you have hard water and you get lots of calcium deposits, you can clean this in a Ziploc baggie with salt and um, uh, alcohol. So put salt and alcohol together, put this in there and shake it up and it'll make get it all super super clean. But then you have to um, make sure you clean the grooves and this little sucker, I don't know if it's going to show you, but there's grooves in here. You got to clean that and I put a little bit of um, olive oil and rub it around in there on a rag and that keeps it spinning. Alright? So we're going to, as soon as my timer goes off, we're going to pop this on and then you wait probably about um, 15 to 20 minutes or so for it to come up to pressure. And then how you know it's up to pressure, it'll start doing its shh venting. Alrighty, so my timer went off and we're going to just pop this right on. And you push it down until it clicks and then there you go. And now... We wait for this to come to pressure. Now there's a little red doohickey. That's a safety thing. And sometimes you just need to go a little pop and then it'll go up. But uh, sometimes it just like sits there spitting and I just like do a little pop and then it pops up. It's just one of those things that most canners do. So you just like remind it to pop up. <laughs> It probably would pop up eventually, but it just drives me nuts. So, that's what I do. Alright, we'll come back when that gets all spinning. And then shut it off for those that want it to be just regular taste in fridge milk. Well, close to it. I'm going to start my timer for 10 minutes. I'm going to turn my heat down just to medium low to maintain that heat on mine and uh, 10 minutes and then we'll shut it off. Our milk is all done and let's take it out. We're going to open up the canner here and open the lid up away from your face so the steam doesn't hit your face. Okay. Uh, looks like one of my top ones might have vented uh, a little. So, you know, it's normal to get some siphoning here and there. Your jar is still sealed. They're good. All right, so let's start with tattlers. Let's get these tattlers out. Let me, I need a, a rag here. Help me. I like to hold the bottom just for safety. Oh, I can already tell. You can tell with tattlers, they start concaving in and developing a little droplet in the center. 
and then you know it's sealed. You'll see that shadow droplet in the very center of the jar right here of like condensation or moisture from your product as it starts concaving. Looks real pretty. Let's put this down right here on the rag. So here's all the tattlers. Let's go through and tighten them before we get the other ones out. We need it. An oven mitt. I didn't have my oven mitt. Okay, let's go through and tighten these up real fast before I get the rest out. Oh, I can hear I hear that pinging. That's only good. That's a good thing about um the tins that uh, yeah that pinging. Everyone loves that pinging. It's easier to tell when things seal when that pings. Move this out of the way here. But you'll get the hang of tattlers. You'll realize when they're sealing, they'll start sucking in, pulling in. There's a little milk on the top of this one. So, but it doesn't look like much came out, just maybe a slight bit. Okay, now let's get the rest. Put that here. I want to move the tattlers over so you can see the metal ones. There we go. Alright, so let's get. Oh, you know, I don't think the milk came from these. They came from the bottom. The bottom one siphoned more because there's milk down here. Uh, I think one siphoned from the bottom. Like I said, it's okay. You'll get a few, like, slight siphoning here and there, but I have inch headspace on everything. So, let's see. You'll, you might be able to find the culprit if there's less than an inch. See, nice, there's an inch. I'm gonna wipe down the tops before they get messy. Well, they all look pretty good if there was any siphoning. There was a tiny, tiny bit, which is your what what's desired is just a small amount. Yeah, all of them look to be having a very good head space so it's just on one of these you know it kind of smells a little like vanilla it could have been one of those the cream ones yeah it's it's one of my creamer ones because I smell the vanilla so all these are used to reuse lids Except for the purple ones. The purple ones are new. And the tattlers, of course. Uh, I want to put it on a rag. So this is a creamer. Let's move this over. This is the creamer one right here that we made. So I have two brand new ones, oh, three brand new ones, sorry. Three new ones, which are the purple lids right here. You see the purple lids? And that looks like it's good. This is the other creamer. And one more, and this is the one, 
I think seven because it's the messiest, but it still has like a one inch headspace. I don't know if you can tell with these purple jars. But yeah, everything's one perfect one inch headspace still. So I think the creamer, that's the one I'm going to be opening first. Yeah, that one's the messiest one. It has milk all over the top. So, but it didn't siphon much, just a bit, and it spit all on the top right here. It's still sealed, so we're good to go. And that is the, all about can and milk. That's that. We'll just talk to you later. Bye-bye.